Hey everybody, the full moon lunar eclipse is quite potent and powerful. It's happening on Friday, May 5th at 1.34 p.m. Eastern time. What do you need to know about these energies? I'm gonna break it down sign by sign, so keep watching. So this reading is for all signs. It is time stamped. The time stamps are in the description of the video. All right, let's discuss the astrology of this full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio happening at 14 degrees. So you're definitely going to want to look at your natal chart and see what you may have at 14 degrees, Scorpio, Aquarius, Taurus, and Leo, because that may indeed affect you perhaps more than other signs. And it's going to affect all of us. We all live under the same skies. It is a full moon lunar eclipse. So what this is really uh, signifying is a wrap up of a cycle that began in January of 2022, when the North Node moved into Taurus and the South Node moved into Scorpio. So this is the last eclipse in Scorpio, this, with this eclipse that's happening on Friday for, for many, many years, <laughs> a South Node eclipse. So this is an important karmic chapter Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. Pluto has just gone retrograde and he will be sticking his butt back into Capricorn uh, for a little while. Again, signifying and emphasizing this energy of wrapping up karmic cycles. So wherever you have Scorpio in your natal chart, you want to look at how you have reached a successful conclusion to the themes and situations that have been going on since January of 2022. Okay, so if you need your astrology chart, go to astro.com and plug in your birth info and you can see your chart. And south nodes are, of course, signified by the dragon's tail. It is about energy that is sweeping out of our lives and it does have a lot to do with karmic wrap ups, closing karmic chapters. So um, there may have been just some inevitable changes that were either perhaps uh, forcefully encouraged by the universe, let's say, in your life, wherever Scorpio is. Uh, but of course, Scorpio is also symbolized by the phoenix rising from the ashes. So this full moon is a good point to look at where have you transformed? How did that transformation go? Where might there still be a few little things left to, to deal with? Um, but this is a big, big spotlight signal from the universe, lighting up your path in the Scorpio area of your chart. And not only is it showing you where and how you let go, but also it is illuminating the future possibilities for yourself as well. So, because remember too, it is about transformation with Scorpio. It's not just, and Pluto, it's not just about bulldozer of doom taking things out of our lives. It is also about regeneration and rebuilding. This a full moon lunar eclipse, we cannot forget, is also opposite Uranus in Taurus. Uh, wow. So, you know, eclipse energy brings surprising twists anyway, but with a full moon lunar eclipse opposite the planet of twists and surprises and awakenings and epiphanies, Uranus. This is awakenings, surprises, and epiphanies on steroids. So with this uh, tarot reading today, what we're going to look at is this spotlight energy from the universe shining its light on, yes, what you have successfully transformed. And because of those transformations, what is now going to open up for you in the Scorpio area of your chart. Okay. So we're going to get into it. I suggest that you watch for your rising sign first, since I am going to break this out by houses and then your sun sign. And again, if you need your chart, go to astro.com, plug in your birth info and you can get one. And you know, it's also a great time to book a reading with me, a soul session, and we'll dive into your chart as well and uh, analyze it and see what the upcoming energies may have in store for your life path. Okay. Link in the description to book a reading with me. All right, guys, let's get into it. All right, Aries. So you've had the South node going through your eighth house of sex, death, taxes, uh, personal transformation, financial transformation, 
emotional transformation, intimacy, psychological healing, uh, inheritances, all sorts of deep and taboo situations, things that are hidden because the eighth house rules the occult and occult means something that is hidden. Uh, so you've really uh, been looking at maybe some shadow material, transforming your life and paying off debt, perhaps, including karmic debts. So let's see what we need to know about this full moon eclipse. Like what is the universe showing you in terms of your success? And then where are you going? All right. Ace of swords. Very nice. And the strength. Wow. Okay. King of Pentacles in your heart. The Magician. And the King of Swords. All right. Wow. Oh, I'm getting chills, Aries. So this is an extremely positive message. Absolutely. So, and remember, you can still use these energies because the, the South Node is still going to be in Scorpio until the middle of July. Um, and then the North Node is going to go into your, your sign. Okay, we're going to get to this in a second, but look at this. So what you have successfully done or what the universe has really called you to do is cut away things that are not authentic to your heart space. All right, we have the Leo energy, but we have the number eight. And this South Node transit, as I said, was in your eighth house. So you had the strength or you stepped into the strength of being extremely decisive about some eighth house issue in your life and you have cut the cord. So you could have cut a cord with some sort of addiction. You could, could have cut a cord with unhealthy, toxic relationships or something that was really draining your energy because, and that could be something physical as well because of the strength card or perhaps with a Leo, uh, that's possible. Or also perhaps with, um, with some sort of, again, a situation that was not fully aligned with your heart space. So you did this. Take the credit for the important change that you made, okay? Because this was not easy. And it did require you to tap into some inner strength that perhaps you doubted you had. But the, you passed a test. This is the other thing. You passed a very, very important test in terms of uh, being decisive about your own personal power and really stepping into it. Um, there may have been something here with really using your voice. That's the other thing because the Ace of Swords is here. Okay, so really speaking your truth, living your truth and cutting away, as I said, with the Ace of Swords, cutting away things that were inauthentic, unaligned and cause you to lose your strength rather than build you up. Okay, now. Um, we have to get the cards out from under Ariel. Okay. <laughs> now she's laying on the other ones. She's got to take ownership of the cards. Now in your heart space, we have the King of Pentacles, which is beautiful. So, um, and this also signifies where the North node was moving, <laughs> uh, in Taurus, which is your second house of money and values and self-esteem. So in your heart is this King of Pentacles. You have overcome, I think, some sort of crisis of confidence. Again, Ace of Swords strength card that we just had. And you successfully passed that te test because you owned your power and you owned your worth. You were not going to let anybody trample over you. Okay. So in whatever this eighth house issue is, whether it's dealing with, uh, you know, the eighth house is other people's money too. So there could have been something with that, something with taxes, inheritances. Uh, you know, again, uh, power struggles, really eighth house as well, power struggles. So you triumphed. This is excellent because you really owned your value. Now we have the magician after that, which is fabulous because again, this is about personal power. And then we have the king of swords. We had the ace of swords before. Now we have the king of swords. So you no longer doubt. I mean, unequivocally, no more doubt about something that tested you during the South Node transit. Um, and that trial by fire or that situation, that karmic situation that you went through is gonna really empower you to create something new out of it when the North Node goes into your sign in mid-July. We have the magician, which is about personal manifestation power. 
and this beautiful king of swords, you're going to be, again, making an important decision and just, I mean, again, stepping into your power to get it done. This could be an important new contract, communications project. Again, any way you use your voice, whatever that means for you. Uh, and it's going to bring magic into your life. You have cut away something that really, really was going to drag you down 100%. And you're going to see, you're going to see this rebirth to even greater personal power as a result, especially with that North Node getting ready to go into your sign. Very nice energy. You can create any path ahead that you want, Aries. You can. And you learn this and you know this. I think you know something much more about your personal power than you have ever known before. So Taurus, you have had this south node going through your seventh house of partnerships, both business and personal. So there absolutely could have been, since January 2022, uh, karmic chapters ending with certain soul contracts that you have had in your life. Okay, so let's see what we need to know about that. But again, it's not just about taking out people in your life. It's also going to be about bringing new people in. So as the next chapter unfolds for you. So let's see what we need to know, Taurus, about this energy for you. Ace of Swords, Aries just got this. And I shuffled. I shuffle in between and the Hermit. The five of wands, the king of pentacles, there's your energy, and the Pluto. All right. So what you have learned is not to fear being alone, the hermit, and not to fear making decisions that are spiritually also in your best interest in terms of letting letting certain relationships go yes hermit is your virgo your fifth house of love romance creativity uh so this could have also been uh letting go of a child as well like maybe they you know empty nest they went off to school or they got married or they moved out or you know something like that um but really the south node is going through that seventh house for you so more you know business personal relationships but in any case um you, were, you made the decision that you would rather be alone. You'd rather go it alone than continue to put up with shenanigans of whatever that soul contract is. So Ace of Swords is such a clean, clear, decisive energy. And it also is cutting away that which does not serve you any longer. So you absolutely wrapped up something probably a very long standing. It could have been from nine years ago. It could have been from 13 years ago also, or double those numbers, okay? So double the, the 9, 18, or double the 13, 26. All right, so this is beautiful. You, you needed also this period of solitude. It was very important for you to go through that to get your spiritual house in order, okay? Because of other factors, which of course includes the North Node, that was going through your sign, asking you, you know, do you want to really continue to live your life this way? And also Uranus going through your sign, which is continuing for the next couple of years, which is about, yes, bringing unexpected changes that are to awaken, awaken you and choose differently for yourself. Okay. So interesting. We have the five of wands in your heart. You may still be a little discombobulated, which is understandable because anytime we go through these deep changes and especially letting soul contracted relationships go, it, it does shake us up. I mean, there is a little bit of discombobulation. Absolutely. So allow yourself to, to feel this way. You may still even feel a little torn. It's possible. You may still feel in your heart a little like, like you're spinning your wheels. But I think with this eclipse, which we have the Scorpio showing up here, um, there's, I think, going to be an important affirmation coming in for you. Maybe it has something to do with finances. So there could be finally a financial settlement wrapping up for you, news of it, 
especially if you were going through some sort of divorce or decoupling, even in a business situation, uh, there could be, because we have the pentacle here, there could be some news finally of the finances wrapping up. Um, but I also feel that this full moon lunar eclipse is showing, shining the light and showing you that um, there will be a positive change because we have your energy here in terms of the next relationships you call in that will be more aligned for you. And they will be more aligned with your authentic self because not to say you were inauthentic before, but you know, as we continue to step into and grow into our power and into our authenticity and just and heal and discard layers of blech, right? Like, you know, our relationships do shift and what we're looking for in terms of relationships also shifts. So the next person that comes in for you, and I do feel that another one's coming soon, probably maybe by Scorpio season, since we have this here, or within 13 weeks, uh, there is absolutely a better alignment with your energy. And in fact, they may have been through a very similar experience. They could be a Virgo. A Virgo could be coming into your life. This could be happening in Virgo season. It's possible. Uh, but there's going to be a better alignment with your values. Um, so this is, this is very positive, but you would not have had that type of relationship had you not let go of the one that you were currently, you know, dealing with whatever that situation is. So, um, this is really rebirth energy as well with this Pluto. So I think you're going to really feel that those final chords cut at this full moon lunar eclipse. And I would suggest, again, I always suggest, I don't tell people what to do. I suggest that if you are feeling like this still in your heart, that you do some sort of cord cutting ceremony or fire ceremony, or even because we're dealing with also earth energy here. And of course, water with the Scorpio, but the Taurus Scorpio, you could bury something in, you know, in your yard that's symbolic of burying the past. You could also, um, again, work with the laws of your jurisdiction and what's appropriate. But you could also perhaps uh, do some sort of ceremony by the water. And again, you sim something symbolizing casting away, you know, the energy, do something with a salt bath, things like that. Okay, so I think that that could be very helpful for you, Taurus, at this full moon lunar eclipse to use the energies. All right, Gemini, you have this full moon lunar eclipse happening in your sixth house of work and well-being. So the universe is going to show you where you made appropriate changes in those areas where there may still be some changes to make. A new path, perhaps, getting ready to open up for you in your work and well-being. All right, let's see what we have. Gemini's. Okay, we have the Page of Cups. And we have the Six of Wands. Okay. The Pluto in the heart of the situation. The Knight of Cups. And the Eight of Cups. Okay. All right, so at some point during this uh, transit of the South Node through this sixth house of work and well-being, Gemini, uh, you, since January 2022, you dealt with an offer that did give you some satisfaction, the Six of Wands. So you could have gotten a promotion, you could have gotten some publicity, uh, kudos, congratulations. You could have gotten a leadership position, something like that with the six of wands. Uh, and that was fine. <laughs> that was fine. But you're never one to rest on your laurels. Okay. You're definitely, that's what I love about Gemini's. Like you're always like looking to improve, looking for the next thing. Um, you know, cause you get bored. That's the thing, you know, cause your mind is so active. You get bored. Um, I feel like Y'all, the next thing that's coming in, because you took this opportunity, which did fit you, which was good, um, it gave you a skill set that I think you are going to want to perhaps um, leverage going forward, but just not at that particular place. I'm going to read this through work. So uh, 
I think some of you are going to be actively, the universe is going to bring you another opportunity to regenerate your career. Now, again, this is nothing bad, okay? Or what the universe is really showing you is that you had to make a change uh, and, and, you know, kind of take that emotional baby step forward to step into greater power and leadership with your career, which may result in leaving behind what you've already done. So it's a general reading, depending on where you're at in this cycle, apply the energies, okay? Um, but whatever change you made, it, it was necessary. It taught you something important, the six of wands, about your capabilities. Um, but you want the next thing. And this Knight of Cups, Eight of Cups, I would say within, um, I would say within eight weeks, there may be some, by cancer season, there may be some new opportunity for you coming in that the universe again is trying to steer you steer you toward knight of cups can be a, an important meeting can be a job interview this can also be somebody looking out for you and like kind of telling you on the down low hey this is an opportunity coming up like get involved with this and then we have the eight of cups which is about another transformational change and moving on so it's very interesting because I think as the nodes also get ready to shift out of a sign, like they're hovering at the very end point, um, they can also bring in another change. So the North Node is going to be going into your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams. So like I said, I feel like you're going to be manifesting an even better situation for yourself because of some maybe emotional changes you've had since since maybe your six of wands happened if it already happened for you and maybe you realize that wasn't the be all end all it was just a, a staging point so to speak for the next level of development of your career one that perhaps will uh be more emotionally rewarding for you in some way not that this is bad but there's something here where you may be seeking more emotional satisfaction you may want also a different change so that you can spend more time with family or a partner. So that's possible also. Um, but this is nothing bad here. I mean, I just think there's going to be another shift. As I said, some of you may have already made this shift. Um, whatever shift that is the next on stage is going to be absolutely very emotionally rewarding for you. So, and again, may also tap into this. This is excellent energy here, Gemini. So uh, if you have been feeling like, yeah, there, there needs to be another change, I think you're correct on that for your life. And don't be afraid to go for it. And the universe, again, with this full moon lunar eclipse may show you who's on your side, may bring in, Scorpio can often bring in Pluto and Scorpio energy, brings in information that was hidden. So again, somebody behind the scenes kind of bringing in intel for you of a possible next opportunity. So just kind of keep your spidey senses on the alert. So Cancer, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, creativity, taking risks, the house of the entrepreneur, the house of your children. So the South Node could have brought in some sort of faded romance so that romance either did blossom or perhaps it got you know it went into the ethers uh there could have been a change in your creative direction you may be wrapping up an important creative project at this time and releasing it into the world you may be changing creative direction you may be ch have been changing direction with your business in some way if you own your own business so let's see what we need to know for you with this energy cancer. All right, so we have the Hermit, your Virgo third house of communication, and the Four of Pentacles, your Taurus 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams, the Five of Wands in your heart, your Three of Swords, and the Queen of Pentacles. Okay. All right, I'm going to read this a couple different ways. Um, some of you absolutely um, 
I think we're involved in some sort of relationship or, or this is a relationship that was already ongoing. It may not have started in 2022 or 2023, but it could have started earlier, but could have started four years ago even. That's very possible. Uh, but it is one perhaps in which you felt alone, even though you were in the relationship uh, with this Hermit and Four of Pentacles. Like you kept trying to get it to be something more solid in your life, but uh, I don't think it was capable of that. That was not its purpose in your life for some reason. Uh, this full moon lunar eclipse may in fact bring the final uh, straw with that particular relationship if you've been in that type of situation with the three of swords here. And the reason why is because you value yourself. You have learned a powerful, powerful lesson of of self-worth in being in this. Like this is this can really be hanging in there but just getting crumbs. Um, especially with this five of wands in your heart where there is this combobulation, there is like fighting for attention, fighting to be noticed, that type of thing cancer could have been going on. And this lunar eclipse, yes, may bring that last straw moment, but you're doing it. Yes, it hurts, but you're doing it out of value for yourself. Okay. So that's possible for some of you, others of you, uh, this may have something to do with a creative block that you've been going through and a creative regrouping because this is your third house of communication. So writing, speaking, teaching, okay, those areas of your life. You may have had something that was producing results in your life, the four of pentacles that did give you some finances. Uh, and this is probably something you did alone. So this is, again, could be an internet business you did alone, a writing business you did alone, uh, teaching online, like something solo. This is solopreneur energy going on here with the hermit, like I said, third house and this. And it brought in some money, the four of pentacles, but there was something about it that was still not settled in your heart about it. Maybe you wanted more finances. Maybe you were tired of not being around people, whatever. I mean, there was something still not right about it. Um, and, and thus you've been making tweaks to the plan. I think you may be letting go. You're choosing to let go of something that in those areas that didn't yield the full results financially that you would like. And you're going to be choosing something else, Queen of Pentacles, that is going to do that for you. This is the next level of development in this five of, of five of cups, <laughs> five of cups, in the fifth house area of your life, the Scorpio area. So you know, but, the, but there is something here a little bit. Again, three of swords is not always a heartbreak. It can just be a blockage, an emotional blockage or also mental because it's the swords, but uh, that we're just not into it anymore for whatever reason. And it's okay to be honest with yourself that you want more in terms of the financial compensation. That's okay. It's okay. And I think you're realizing that you, you're realizing all the blood, sweat and tears and the, the creative efforts you put into something you want you want the coin coming back to you to the level that you deserve. So there could be something like that uh, going on for you as well um, with these energies. So, um, but the universe, I feel like the really the key message here is that the universe is showing you that um, it's time to stop settling for less finances, especially if you're self-employed, okay? Uh, because of the financial aspects that are coming out in this reading, the four of coins and this queen of coins. Um, I think a new kingdom of prosperity can be yours as a solopreneur, especially. Um, there may be uh, there may be a funding source that you will be letting go of. I mean, it could be a job. It's possible. But you're choosing it, I feel. You're going to choose to let it go. Um so this is, this is going to be, this is going to be interesting. Um, I feel like honestly, your best bet is still to do something for yourself. This three of swords could also have been a recent disappointment with other people you wanted to do a creative project with this that news may be coming in at this full moon. Okay. So if you were thinking that you're going to partner up with a couple, I don't think it's just one person. It's probably two, two or three. You're going to partner up with people and do a project, do start a business. I mean, whatever you're doing, 
there might be something that's disappointing about that. And you're realizing that at currently at this time, it doesn't mean this can never happen, but at this time, it's about you going solo and doing for yourself. So that may be another possibility with these particular energies. So interesting, interesting energies here, Cancer. All right, Leo. So this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your fourth house of home, family roots and what nourishes you and what feeds you. This is significant because the moon is naturally associated with the fourth house as the ruler of cancer in the astrological wheel. So to have this grand finale, so to speak, in this very important house uh, is going to be interesting. And also because, yes, it is opposite Uranus. There could be a surprise development involving where you're living, how you're living, who you're living with, any home-related situation. All right, let's see what we have going on for you, Leos. We have the Knight of Pentacles. We have the Five of Swords. The Hermit, the Virgo, your second house of money. The Five of Cups. And the Ten of Wands. Okay, so this this is interesting. Something regarding the home is finally getting finished. You're getting news that it is going to be finished. Uh, the burden is going to be shifted. Um, whatever has been <clears throat> chained in the home. Chained? Changed. Oh my God, was something chained in your home? Would you felt like you were chained to your home for some reason? Like, working from home or feeling isolated at home or something like that. There's a reason that slipped out of my mouth. Okay. So that's, that's interesting. Um, because again, we have this hermit in the middle in the heart of the reading. So you could have felt that you were cut off from the world in some way. You were spending too much time at home. You didn't maybe really want to, you wanted to go out and socialize, but you weren't for whatever reason. Maybe you had to take care of just a lot of, uh, you know, family issues going on, or maybe somebody wasn't well in your family and you had to stay home and take care of them. You know, could be things like that going on. Uh, the full moon is absolutely showing you that whatever you did was worth it. Okay. You're, that's your second house, not just of money, but of value and values. Okay. So you have the self-respect, whatever you did, you can hold your head high and know that spiritually you took care of business. The hermit's a very spiritual energy. So you lived your values, in other words, even if other people didn't get why you were doing what you were doing, you stood by your values, you lived your values in this home related area of your life, the foundation, it's fourth house, also the foundation of your life. So something, I mean, we have energy here of slow, knight of pentacles and stuck, worried about the fact that the pace of this situation is just not moving very quickly. Uh, then we have the five of cups, this disappointment and sadness uh, that things are not progressing more quickly or maybe even in a way you would have liked or sadness, like I said, of being kind of stuck with this burden, whatever it was. And then we have the wrap up of the energetic situation, the ten of wands. So I think because we have this hermit with this full moon here, I think this full moon is going to show you that your decision in this area of your life since January of 2022 was the correct one. Uh, that is coming to an end. You are going to feel a sense of relief, release, and personal freedom once again from whatever this was going on for you. Um, it's an energetic cycle wrapping up. Absolutely. Now, some of you may be coming to the end of some sort of home improvement project. You may be coming to the end of finally paying off a mortgage. That's possible. You may be coming to the end of uh, staying in a situation, in a living place that really wasn't in your best interests. And some of you may be moving on and moving out to be on your own, the hermit, and wrapping up a cycle of perhaps being in a relationship, five of swords, five of cups, that was not satisfying for you, but you stayed in it because, I mean, sometimes we have to, we have to stay in situations because we need a roof over our heads or we don't have the finances yet to move or something like that. So some of you could have been staying also in some sort of um, home living situation because of financial reasons. 
um, like a, or a marriage or a roommate situation or something like that, or living with relatives. But now that cycle is wrapping up for you. Uh, so I think you're going to see evidence of that. And I think you're going to see evidence that um, you passed a very important spiritual test with this home family roots situation, Leo. So you should, you should be feeling very proud of yourself. Please acknowledge yourself for that. You did the right thing. Despite the fact that you had a lot of tension and anxiety and worries about it, you did the right thing. And you did the right thing also in caring for those around you. So again, Leo is often the matriarch or patriarch of the family. And you may have felt very alone in doing that. You know, you may have had to make some difficult decisions, um, but you you t took care of business. You did the right thing uh, and you got your people and yourself through to the other side of whatever this situation is. So be proud of yourself. All right, Virgo. So this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your third house. Now, the third house is interesting. It is a house of communications, of course, writing, teaching, speaking, networking, sales. Third house is about transportation. And the third house is about siblings and also our neighborhood and, you know, the locale where we're living. But third house can also be your country, whereas the ninth house is the bigger world, like a different country you may move to or something like that. So let's see uh, what we got going on. There are some Virgos who uh, may be feeling the call and the pull toward leaving their homeland and living abroad especially as that North Node has been, go and you're honest, going through your ninth house of travel, international travel. So while we have this eclipse and we have the North Node still uh, in your that ninth house until the middle of July, there may be a decision that you come to, if you've been thinking of living abroad, that, that may come to a head at this full moon. Maybe you make the decision, or if you've already done that move, the universe shows you why that move had to happen and how that's going to unfold your future for you. So very interesting energies here, Virgo, if that's going on for you. But of course, a third house rules other things too. So let's see what we have going on for you. You could be finishing up some sort of big um, mental project, you know, big writing project, communications project. Let's see or that aspect of your career, perhaps. All right, so we have an Eight of Swords and we have a Page of Cups. The Hierophant, there's the Taurus energy in your heart. The Four of Wands, which is home-related energy. And the Libra, your second house of money. There's gonna be a new financial opportunity coming in for you. That's what the universe is going to show you. Now, the financial opportunity may not be tomorrow, okay? It may not be the day of the eclipse. It's the future unfoldment of these energies, why you needed to make some wrap-ups and some changes in that third house, okay? So in a certain respect, you may have been stuck working on a project, eight of swords, like mental, again, a mental project. This could be going on for the last eight months, eight years, something like that. And I mean, it was okay. You know, you invested some creative energy, energy into it, page of cups. It is now time to release it out into the world. Absolutely. Or release that part of your business career. As I was saying, like, let it go with love. It's the page of cups here. Um, you just, you know, <laughs> let it go with love or you're kind of done with that. And that's fine. But you are being guided. Here's the hierophant in your heart. So you are in this deck, it's the guide. You are being guided by the universe to, I think, step into a greater role in the world with your, especially your communication skills, your marketing, if you have your own business, that type of thing. Um, maybe relocating abroad for a time, working abroad and becoming a laptop entrepreneur or you know, something like that. Um, or just getting your message out to a wider world, like working with a bigger clientele. Like, let's say you've just like you've just been working, whatever you're doing, you're working in a little local environment. Um, now it's time to expand into perhaps traveling to other places to get clientele or using the Internet, which is very ninth house, using the Internet in some way to, to get a broader client base that could be global, that type of thing. 
All right, we have this beautiful four of wands. Now this is Aries energy, and that is where your uh, North Node will be moving into that eighth house of transformation for you. So uh, absolutely, whatever you are stepping into, and then this, this news that you're seeing, this spotlight, this path clearing the way forward for you, is gonna help transform your finances. We have eighth house and second house represented here for you. Virgo, gonna help transform your finances and open up a new door. It's interesting in this four of wands, you see this is like a gateway here and North node is a gateway energy. So you're gonna feel that and sense that. And especially after the North node goes into Aries mid July, uh, that income stream may start to really pan out for you and percolate. Uh, now, as I often say with Gemini and since Gemini, um, well, and and Libra, I mean, we can say it about Libra as well, but Libra is the scales, but Gemini is the twins. But with the Libra, you can, because it's the scales, you could have two areas that you're going to be focusing in on with this new path forward. OK, so uh, maybe two different types of clients you'll be working with or two different types of new things you're going to be involved in with your business and career, something like that. Two new income streams, something like that. Um, but there's definitely uh four of wands is also where where we're living <laughs> you know it is a home energy it's a celebratory home energy so you may also be just looking at where can i bring more um adventure into my daily life like if things have felt a little stale and boring where you're living this may also be about calling in more activities, uh, connecting with more people, transforming, in other words, this, this eighth house, like how you're connecting with other people and perhaps even forging deeper connections with other people in your local environment, because that is also eighth house energy. So uh, this, is, this is very promising, but this is definitely some sort of gateway. You could be living between two places. That's another possibility with this. You could be... You could have, I mean, this may be opening up a path for you, perhaps some of you to buy a second home or again, like be a, a digital nomad. You have a home base, but then you travel a lot. Uh, that's going to bring financial opportunities for you if you do that. There's something about you expanding your horizons. You've been kind of limiting yourself maybe a little bit to just more immediate stuff. It's time to really push the boat out, push, push yourself out and get out there a lot more Virgo. All right, Libras. So you're having this full moon lunar eclipse happening in your second house of self-worth, money and values and your skills. And you have uh, Uranus, of course, in your eighth house of other people's money, transformation, etc. So... Let's see what we need to know. There could be some news of a funding source wrapping up or some other financial conclusion in your life. Let's see. So that you can open the door to a new prosperous situation. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we have the Four of Swords and we have the Star. The Tower. Uranus, Queen of Cups, the Scorpio energy, and the Judgment. Wow, also often associated with Scorpio. Okay, and the number two, your second house again. All right, so the star, gorgeous energy here. Um, I think what's possible here is that uh, there, there could be payback for good behavior. <laughs> I think some sort of news payback for good behavior. It's surprising. We have the tower coming out here. Um, some sort of offer could be coming in with the judgment card here that you need to decide on because we have the Taurus energy coming in. And because of course the Iranian influence, this could be coming from another person's funding source. So uh, this could be an inheritance. This could be an estate wrapping up, an income tax refund that's bigger than what you're expecting. Uh, something like that with other people's money that uh, you don't see it coming, the four of swords. It's hidden. It's hidden away. It's hidden off stage. Uh, 
Pluto has gone retrograde in this Aquarian house of yours, the fifth house. Um, but the star card is about healing. Uh, you could have been really working on healing your self-worth, what you deserve, especially what's coming to you from other people. Uh, since this transit of the South Node in your second house in January 2022, that's when it began. So whatever healing you have done with your self-worth should also heal your finances in some way. You could have also changed your job over the last year and a half because you needed to get better work-life balance and maybe um, address some health situations. Like maybe there was just a lot of stress in your job and you had to shift Libra and uh, you know take something else, take a new path in terms of how you're earning your money. Uh, you could see that path, that decision you made pay off handsomely. There, there really could be something, uh, I think, an emotional good surprise here for you to decide upon a benefit, an offer, uh, an invitation uh, through other people's resources here. So um, others of you, what may need to happen at this full moon lunar eclipse is to make that decision. Okay, so it just depends. You have to always apply the energies to your life since these are general readings. But uh, some of you maybe have already been through this process. Others of you, because again, this is the eclipse. This You've been working toward the, making this decision. So others of you, because of, of some situation you may have to take care of at home or something to do with just your overall stress levels and well-being, uh, and because Pluto is also back, going to start backtracking into your fourth house of home, because of home or family-related things, uh, you may in fact be making a decision, a surprising decision at this full moon lunar eclipse, or the situation is going to come about where you have to make a decision. Maybe dealing with a water sign person in your life, that's possible. It's likely emotionally based. This is not necessarily a financial decision. I mean, it's going to affect your finances, but in reality, this is more mental and emotional. That's driving. That's the driving force behind this. Um, to make a change to, uh, you know, maybe deal with, like I said, a home or a family matter in some way. So um, there could be, there could be a, a surprising legacy. This is a news of a surprising legacy from a family member. That's also possible. Whether they gift you some finances, whether you inherit something, something like that could also be coming to the fore. And then you're going to need to decide how to proceed with that, that money, that, that information, etc. Inheritance simply means to receive something. It doesn't mean that somebody has to pass on. Uh, you could be, have the surprising result of being put in charge of somebody's finances, a family member's finances. That's also possible if they have been dealing with some sort of health issue. Uh, so that's another possibility with these energies. Um, but you're really looking to bring some sort of making a, a surprising decision to affect the healing balance in your life is what I feel vis-a-vis -vis your, um, your money, your self-worth. So some of you may just feel like, you know what? I've had enough of this. Like I, I deserve better than this particular situation in terms of how I'm earning my money. And again, you may make a surprising decision to leave behind a job. Uh, and you know, that that's going to help you open up a path to transformation. We have the judgment card here, which is also about new life. Again, this may, you may not leave the new job or the job immediately. Uh, but you may make the decision, the line in the sand, the point of no return, enough is enough. Like I deserve better from this situation. So, um, this four of swords is the key here. There's something that's been kind of weighing on your spirit about, about how you're earning your money, how you feel about your earning your money, that type of thing. And, um, you know, you just, I think you just, you know, it's again, it's, it's not that you necessarily want more money, although that's always helpful. I think you just want the, the respect to be valued. That's also the star card. Um, and, and also just feel emotionally perhaps more connected to what you're doing as well. 
So you could also be cutting something loose that's that's just a, a disrespectful situation uh, in regards to you know how you're earning your money. It's another possibility, an income stream. So um, very interesting. Others of you, what might be going on? Full moon lunar eclipse is um, in that second house. Second house also rules our skills. So something that has been kind of hidden behind the scenes that you have not been maybe sharing with other people, you may decide, in fact, or there may be an invitation coming from another person for you to step onto the stage, so to speak, and share that talent and capability with others. And that could open up a new doorway for you, a new uh, avenue of finances. Um, or a benefit from other people's like people employing you or paying you for a gig or something like that. There is, there's definitely an element of surprise. We got the tower here. Yours is the only sign so far that had the tower come out Libra. So I think that this twist energy perhaps may be more pronounced for you. Scorpio, this is your eclipse. Here it is. The last South node eclipse in your sign for quite a while. Uh, you've had the south node going through your sign, really encouraging you to transform your life at all levels. So this may be the final uh, surprise of that transformation on its way to you. Uh, so let's see. Let's see what we have. It's in your first house of the self. You're also your physical body, uh, the way other people see you. And if it's conjunct your sun, this may also, you know, again, at that 14 degree mark. So especially if you're born around, I would say like the, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, around that time period uh, of November, this may, this eclipse may be especially important for you, but it's important for all Scorpios, or if you have your moon in Scorpio or your rising, I mean, you know, again, um, but especially if it's on your sun, you may really feel this big spotlight identity shift and maybe that last final layer of shedding the skin. Snakes are very scorpionic. <laughs> okay, I was shedding that last bit of old identity. Uh, so others of you may see how that shedding of identities uh, is really opening up some new vistas for yourself. You could be stepping, you get news of stepping into a new role in your life vis-a-vis -vis other people. Somebody else could bring an invitation. Let's not forget Uranus is still in your seventh house of other people, as is the North Node. So there could be a surprising invitation uh, coming from the universe via someone else for you to make a significant change or level up and go into this next direction of your life because you did shift an, an important identity. You let go. All right, so let's see. Let's see what we have going on for you. You could also be wrapping up a karmic relationship. And by wrapping up, I mean it could be ending, sure, but also could be going to the next level or deepening in some way. Or you're setting yourself up with these transformations to call in a new karmic relationship. So let's see what we have, Scorpio. Ace of Swords, beautiful. And the Four of Cups. The Seven of Swords. The Six of Pentacles. And your energy. All right. I do feel there's something coming to you from, from somebody else. There's new, there's, there's very interesting news. All right. So let's see what we have going on here with this ace of swords and four of cups, what you've been really working on and what you also may be seeing evidence of at this lunar eclipse is how you have cut away the emotionally inauthentic, especially if we look at these three things. So you have had to, Seven of Swords, Four of Cups, Ace of Swords, you have had to get really real with yourself. I mean, you are normally a very honest, authentic, like, let's get real type sign. Like, you dive deep. But oftentimes, you like to analyze other people rather than yourself. <laughs> so 
So I think you've been really, uh, with this South Node Eclipse, you have had to face anything inauthentic that it has not been aligned for you emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Uh, you know, you, you've had to face it and cut it and get rid of it. The last four months in particular may have been especially important in this regard. So, um, you know, the four cups can be emotional dissatisfaction, but also inertia, like we're not taking action on making an important change. So uh, I think some of you have really had to face where maybe you were your own worst enemy at not making an important emotional changes that really could have benefited you. Like that South Node has really shown you where you've had to let go emotionally and face stuff and snap out of it basically, which has been a theme uh, in some of your readings. Uh, but this is great, Ace of Swords, victory and success. Uh, but this is also taking the sword and cutting away. I feel the emotionally inauthentic uh, in whatever area of your life. It could be you've been pursuing the wrong career. It could be something to do with relationships. It could be, you know, where you're living, how you're living or whatever. It's been, I mean, it's your first house. So it's your whole kind of identity. So you've had to face deep emotional dissatisfaction and perhaps even some creative and mental boredom as well with this, with this energy. All right. This full moon lunar eclipse, I think is going to show you, um, if you face those things, how the universe is now going to start to bring in some benefits. So six of pentacles, is the benefactor energy in the regular tarot it's the guy doling out the goodies to the two people on the ground okay so this indeed can be solid benefits help assistance stuff good stuff it could be finances sure but offers opportunities whatever you need to make yourself happy to bring yourself into this next cycle of your life. So with the death card here, this is your energy and this is about massive transformation. So the universe is behind you in this next level growth that you're going to be stepping into and experiencing. And it is bringing you probably at least two key uh, areas of support or coming from two key places. Or one you're kind of already suspecting, yeah, that's going to come in for me. There, the other one could be a surprise because Uranus is involved at this full moon lunar eclipse. So there could be a surprising benefactor coming into your life in some way, giving you exactly what you need, which is fabulous. Like, you know, you've done and dealt with and faced a lot. But this transformation that you have been through really has been the making of you. Because out of this death always comes with Pluto, the regeneration, the resurrection. So you're going to have strong support behind you to get on with the show and get into this next chapter of your life. All right. So there may be, as I said in my prologue to this video, there may be the last little tiny bits of whatever this is to, to face. I think most of Scorpios, how could you not face this stuff the last, you know, the last year and a half? But yeah, there could be one more little tiny thing to look at. That's okay. You know, you got the sword in your hand. You're willing to look at it, cut it away, let it go. Uh, and as I said, there could be good news. It could be a good news about a creative endeavor as well, like a funding source coming in, um, an offer for your services, something like that. With the six of pentacles bringing greater uh financial balance to your life so this is this is excellent um i'm really feeling though it's just it's going to be two there's going to be two clear pieces of news uh that are going to help you get the wind beneath your wings for this next chapter of your life and remember too that the influence of the eclipse yes we feel it a few days before a few days after but it can also come a month later Sometimes it comes a month before also. So I would even, because we have the six, I would even look to the beginning of June for some possible information, offers, financing, whatever you need to come in as well. So your mindset has totally shifted. That's the other thing with this Ace of Swords. Uh, into more acceptance and truth about what you truly need to feel balanced and happy in your life. 
And there's no going back, the death card. There's no going back to the way life was before. You're heading in a brand new, exciting direction and one that is more balanced. And uh, I think also more honoring of your talents and energy. Sagittarius, you have the full moon lunar eclipse in your 12th house of the subconscious, things hidden behind the scenes. 12th house is often uh, where we have needed to make sacrifices, where we have needed to shift some baggage, deal with addictions, bad habits, things that hold us back. So this is a really good time for you to free yourself of the past. Whatever you have been working on releasing and healing karmically in your life since the South Node went into this 12th house in January of 2022, this could be like the final, you know, situation, the final letting go for you. Also, because we have Uranus in your sixth house of work and well-being, it may have indeed uh, associations with you releasing negative self-talk, self-defeating behaviors, things that don't contribute to your overall well-being. So, because with Jupiter coming into that, that sixth house in the middle of May, you are going to be very focused in on improving your life, self-improvement, especially since Jupiter is your ruler. All right, let's see what we need to know about this eclipse for you. Sagittarius. The Four of Swords and the Knight of Swords. Eight of Swords. King of Wands. There's your energy. And the Two of Cups. Beautiful. I'm really getting an image here of you looking in the mirror. That's what I'm getting. Okay, I'll come back to that. Hold that thought. <laughs> That's when I saw that. I'm like, oh, Sag, looking in the mirror and really embracing and liking what you see. And I don't just mean in terms of weight or things like that. I just mean in terms of your energy, your vibe, your emotional state, the joy you see in your face, uh, the relaxation you see, just the well-being. Okay, so we'll come back to that. But let's discuss this. So we have a Four of Swords, which is can be energy of being tucked away hidden out of sight, perhaps mental stress could be some sort of uh, physical ailment caused by mental stress. The Knight of Swords, which can be, yes, a mental shift, but it's shifting into Eight of Swords. So it's not a shift. It's more conflict. Okay. So I think you have had some perhaps uh, conflicts with yourself, mental energy conflicts about how to get unstuck from perhaps self-defeating behaviors that keep you to the sidelines in some way. Maybe that don't, that don't encourage your full participation in an activity or a situation. Uh, you know, like a, a self-sabotage, like, oh, I, I'm too shy. I can't speak in public or I can't lead a group or I can't uh, show up at the gym. I don't want to be seen. It's, you know, just something like that where you've been more comfortable hiding. So there's, a, but you don't want to hide. You really don't. But it's something going on like that. Because remember, this eclipse is happening in the 12th house. The 12th house is it's, it's very fuzzy. Right? It's, it's, it's 12th house. It's, it's, it's associated with Pisces, Neptune, those energies. So it's always a little mystical, misty, mysterious, the 12th house. Uh, and we have this Eight of Swords, which is, yes, you have been kind of your own worst enemy, not allowing yourself to free yourself. This conflict, you want the freedom, but you also don't want it. That causes the internal conflict, but why, why we have the Knight of Swords. So this full moon is going to show you, you know, this, this web that you kind of got yourself stuck in, and it's really going to help you get released and get unstuck. The full moon, remember, illuminates. So it really, because we have the mental energy here, really could bring you a surprising epiphany it's opposite uranus at this full moon in taurus in this sixth house again so there could just be this lightning bolt idea inspiration insight oh that's why i've been doing that this is the motivation behind this this is how i need to shift this to make myself feel comfortable to go and do this thing so I th you really could have this surprising revelation. I do feel it may have something to do with connecting with other people. 
Uh, and I don't just mean romantically. Yes, two of cups can be romantic. It could be dating life, but it also could be just showing up and being there for somebody else, really connecting with somebody emotionally. It could be something with job interviews, uh, uh, presenting yourself to to another person in some way, maybe speaking on a podcast or public speaking, whatever. But I also feel like I said before, it's something about how you're seeing yourself in the mirror, the reflection of yourself um, and how you want to feel more proud of yourself in some way by conquering whatever this is. So you have this energy, which is yours, the King of Wands, and this is absolutely about taking some sort of action forward. You're going to get the epiphany, mental uh, enlightenment, and then it's time to put it into action and practice immediately. Not wait around for inspiration, but do it immediately. And you can do it at small steps at a time. That's okay. Um, so uh, this is beautiful energy. So what you're, what this path is going to be opening up for you is greater self-expression. Uh, feeling just more confident. That's part of your well-being as well. Feeling more confident about your self-expression, your uh, creative abilities. Remember that North Node is going to be going into your house of creativity in the middle of July. So I think this is also about you shifting some things, limiting beliefs about uh, what you can create, how you can create, how you can share your creative gifts with the world, especially through, I think, some sort of writing or speaking or teaching. So um, that's what this is preparing you for. But you got to allow yourself to be enlightened and to, to see, you know, get that epiphany going for yourself. And it is possible that there is some sort of surprise invitation for you to step into this energy. And it's probably going to scare the heck out of you. <laughs> but feel the fear and do it anyway. Okay, again, Uranus coming and inviting you. Hey, Sag, we need your perspective on this. Hey, Sag, speak at this event. Hey, Sag, write this thing for us. We, we need to hear what you have to say. We'd like to publish, to publish uh, your book. Can you write it quickly for us? You see my point. So really burn through the fog and the mist of whatever this energy represents here for you, Sagittarius, because a whole new destiny is getting ready to knock at your door. Capricorn, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 11th house of hopes, wishes, dreams, and networks, friendships, and personal gains. So let's see what you need to know about this full moon lunar eclipse. There could have been, since January 2022, some changes in your friendships. There could have been some karmic endings with certain groups you've been associated with, with perhaps a close friendship. So let's see see what we got going on for you. Whatever sacrifices you have made, I think you may see, what I, especially whatever sacrifices you have made to, I think, improve a group or contribute to the group in some way, you may see some rewards coming back to you because of those sacrifices that you have made. So let's see. You know, if you have been sharing your gifts and talents with a large group of people, as an example, if you have stepped into a leadership role and felt like you were, you know, sacrificing a lot for that, there could be news of a big personal gain coming to you. The surprise factor is in play with Uranus in your fifth house. Let's see what we have. We have the five of swords. I hear JC commenting right now. What would a Capricorn reading be without a five of swords? Love you, JC. Okay, a page of cups, page of wands, the sun, and the magician. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you were wondering if it was all worth it. As I said, the sacrifices that you were making, the mental struggle to keep on keeping on with whatever you were doing for the group, whatever you were working toward in terms of a personal gain. Okay, work with the metaphors of what the houses mean. Uh, you were really investing your 
emotional energy into this. Now, Page of Cups also is your Pisces energy, your third house. So you were writing, speaking, teaching, communicating, sharing from the heart. You really, you were motive. I mean, Capricorn gets such a bad rap sometimes in terms of, oh, they just think about money, blah, blah, blah. No, Capricorn, let's not forget, seventh house is Cancer. So Capricorn really does like to improve and take care of the people in their lives, those closest to them and also groups they identify with as well. It's the Scorpio, it's the loyal nature of Scorpio, and it's also your seventh house Cancerian influence as well. So you really had pure motives and motivation, Page of Cups, to emotionally take care of your people, whatever that means for you. But at the same time, it was stressful. It's been stressful because maybe the, the gains have not been there in terms of the finances, the thank yous, the compliments, you know, et cetera. So it could have felt a little like, what the heck am I doing this for? But you persevered. Okay, now we have news coming in. This is beautiful. Interesting, the Leo is showing up because that's your eighth house of other people's money and benefits coming to you from other people. Ooh, I'm getting chills down my legs. I think there could be news of, yes, some sort of what goes around comes around. And the sun card and the magician a beautiful offer could come from the universe. Uh, again, it's it's something that you have done to benefit other people. The transformation that you have helped other people make, that you yourself have gone through also in not being afraid to put yourself on the line for a group that you feel strongly about. There could be some beautiful, beautiful energy. The sun is happiness. The magician's your personal power, all your skills and talents. There could be an offer, again, Uranus, surprise factor, fifth house for you. There could be an offer to utilize your creative skills in a new way. And this offer may not necessarily come from the group that you've been helping. It's a payback from the universe. I think there's going to be some sort of illuminating news that what you did was correct and there could be some gorgeous opportunity that comes in that your creative energy is going to love. Both of these are creative energies. Um, if you own your own business, same thing, fifth house, that you know your business could improve, something like that. There could be financing that's finally coming in, news of a financing, other again, other people's money. You know, it's it's the effect where, I mentioned this in one video the other day, where, you know, the good we're doing over here, it doesn't always, the good doesn't always come back to us over here. It could come from over here. This is how the universe works. So I do feel there's news of a beautiful personal gain. Could be financial, but also could be an offer that could be life-changing, especially in terms of your creative life, because that's being lit up with the fifth house. I mean, it could be also uh, some sort of invitation to lead, because the Leo here is to step into another leader type of leadership role or the next level of leadership growth and role from whatever you were doing before. There could be a whole new group that you're gonna be associated with and become the leader of with this energy and, and using your creative efforts behind. So this is exciting. This is absolutely transformational and exciting energy here. So I would say the best thing to do with this full moon lunar eclipse is to accept and release whatever efforts you made already, as I said, and, and hold your head high and know you did good, whatever, whatever you were doing, and to welcome in the new and take action on the new when it comes in. You're not abandoning this. You already put in the work. You may feel like, oh, if I take this thing over here, maybe I'm going to, I'm abandoning or abandoning or I'm disloyal to this. No, you're not. You did what you had to do. The universe called you to step into this for whatever reason. And you did. And you, you did it well. There was a, a test, a training ground as it were, but there's something bigger and bolder and better coming in with this energy. Um, and you're going to start on it, I think, fairly soon. I would say right I would say in July with this energy, with the page when the North Node goes into, into Aries, um, what we got going on here. So interesting energies, Capricorn. Aquarius, the full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 10th house of a career. 
This is also the house of public relationships like marriages. So uh, there could be the final wrap up of some sort of career project, career situation. You may be on the verge of finishing up an important career related project. Maybe you're putting out something into the world. You're finally releasing it, releasing a book, a project, a business, you know, something like that. Um, we have the Uranus surprise factor in your fourth house of home family roots, what nourishes you and what feeds you. So it could be, you know, a surprising transition in your career because maybe you're going to get married and you're going to, you know, be a stay at home mom or dad for a while or which is fourth house stuff. Or maybe you're uh, making a decision to retire uh, and spend more time at home. Could be, you know, could be some things like that going on. Or maybe you're going to leave your, your full time job and start a home based business. All of these are possibilities, but always apply the energies to your life. All right, let's see what we have going on. Aquarius. The chariot. That's your it's cancer, your sixth house of work and well-being. And we have the seven of cups. So two sevens. Oh, three sevens. Seven of swords. The Hermit, your eighth house of transformation, and the Knight of Wands. Okay. Um, I think that that this may have something to do with. Um, I think it's connected with your work life, yes, and career, but also it it's tied in absolutely to the fourth house. Uh, in whatever you decide. I think it's possible here that some of you are gonna be deciding to move out or be on your own in some way and maybe start some sort of home-based business. Um, or, or, or if it's not that, that whatever decision you're making in terms of retirement and career is also driven by spiritual considerations. You may wanna go work in a spiritual field or address spiritual issues or address some health things that may be going on for you or other type of spiritual growth, just growth in general with the hermit or a project you want to work on on your own. So you may be wanting to address that and you're wanting to leave your current job in order to do that, either through retirement or perhaps, yes, it's possible starting your own business. A home, I feel it'd be a home-based business uh, with these, with this energy and also what's going on astrologically. So that's possible for some of you. Um, the, a home change, a move could be associated with a career situation. The chariot is about movement. It can be about a choice to stay or to go. Which path are we going to go down? We have the seven of cups, which is a bucket list item. It's creative visualization. It's trying to like figure out which option do I want? What is my heart really telling me? But also we have a seven of swords here. So it can be that this full moon is going to help you cut through the fog and really get honest with yourself about what you need going forward, not only in your career life, but also in your home life. It may have something also to do with a relationship because we have three number sevens and sevens are, yes, associated with the seventh house, which is partnerships. Now we don't have Leo showing up here, which is your seventh house, unless we count the Knight of Wands, but um, you know, so again, apply the energies to your life. So this is big because of the chariot showing up. You're really thinking about uh, the direction you want to go in and how you can um, get more aligned on a path that is right for you. Others of you, maybe you're already retired and you're bored. So some of you may be admitting to yourself, you know what, maybe I retired too early. Maybe I need to go back out there and have a balance between my personal private time, Hermit, and also being out and about in the world, Knight of Wands, and maybe doing a part-time job. So others of you may be deciding that as well. Uh, so the key here is using this, I think this is the key with this full moon lunar eclipse. It's going to show you where you have been telling Fibonacci's to yourself about how you do want to move forward career-wise. What are my dreams and desires and goals? How do I define them? The Hermit. 
And what also do I need, not just financially, but also for my personal well-being, which is very hermit, and my spiritual well-being. Some of you may be choosing to absolutely embark upon some sort of spiritual career if you haven't already done so. So maybe you're going to go study astrology or you're going to go study tarot or Reiki, massage, uh, you know, whatever you consider spiritual, essential oils, what, whatever. Okay. Some of you may be doing that as well. And you're going to be moving forward Knight of Wands and taking action on that. And I would say this may come about for you when the North Node goes into Aries, so mid-July. Okay, so you may need a little time to just kind of recalibrate before you move forward. But um, interesting energies here. Again, some of you may also be contemplating uh, a move and how that might affect your career life. You may be deciding if I want to level up my career chariot, uh, I need to get honest with myself that, you know what, where I'm living right now ain't it. I'm not going to get the growth I want in my career Unless I make a decision to move, that's possible also with these energies. So that's how we get the hermit, the transformation of having to actually uproot yourself and go somewhere new. All right, so apply the energies to your life, but this looks, this looks very interesting. And the chariot here does suggest you will land on your feet. You will be going in the right direction. The key is that seven of swords. Be brutally honest with yourself with what you need. Pisces, the full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life. This house also rules publishing, academia, international travel, international business, and just being in the world. So you may have had an opportunity to travel abroad, live abroad since January, 2022. Distant shores may have been calling you. Uh, some of you may have been working on some sort of publishing project. Maybe you're finally finishing that up now. Maybe you're finishing up a residency abroad. Um, maybe you're, you're fi finishing up a post in academia and going for tenure. It could be like something like that. Uh, maybe you have been uh, working on a project that you are now going to debut to the world in some way and release it to the world. So let's see what we have going on for you, Pisces. We have Uranus in that third house of communication. So getting your message out to the world has been a very, very key theme. Let's see what we have for you, Pisces. We have temperance, which is your 10th house of career, Sag energy. And more Sag with the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Swords. The Hierophant, which is the Taurus energy. And wow, the Three of Wands, that third house coming up again. Okay. So you're making some decisions about some changes that you're going to implement, I think, about your career, because the temperance was the first energy. Um, and career in terms of the ninth house areas that I mentioned. Um, I'm also feeling lawyer energy. I'm feeling copyrights and trademarks. So some of you may be working on something with that as well, that you may have decided that you finally have to... Uh, get the legal, also this queen of swords, this legal paperwork in order for uh, a business idea, your LLC, um, an invention of, you know, patent trademarks, like those types of things. Um, okay. So the full moon lunar eclipse is, is bringing to your attention where you need to perhaps invest uh, more of your uh, fiery, passionate, brave energy into your career. So you may in fact be changing and deciding, Queen of Swords, uh, how you want to uh, make a change that will bring more fire and passion to your career. Uh, maybe again, you're wrapping up something that 
has been okay, but maybe you kind of lost the fire. You want to get back the fire and passion in your life. Um, especially with the things you put out into the world for your career. That's 10th, 9th house situations that are going on with these energies, the tarot, and then also where the eclipse is. So I think this eclipse is going to bring to light where you need to be a little strategic, a little more thoughtful. You may have a very important decision you're making about a big new commitment with the direction you're going in with third house stuff. Hierophant, writing, teaching, speaking, networking, sales. You're wanting to really call in a new vision for yourself. Make a plan to go forward. The ship is on the horizon. Like, and again, you may have already been working toward this in some way. But like I said, you may just feel at this eclipse, you've reached the end of the line with one phase of it. That's perhaps what could be going on. One phase of it or just... It's time to move on and do something different with your energy. You want to invest, like I said, your heart and your soul and your creative fire into something else. So you're recognizing that at this full moon lunar eclipse. You're mentally saying, yeah, you know what? I'm going to sign myself up for the new course of action I want to go on. And I think this before the North Node gets out of Taurus, which is the middle of July when the North Node will go into your second house of money, Aries. I think you will be on some sort of new path here, Pisces, that you have long dreamed of also. This is also, this is not just also a fly by night. It comes out of nowhere. You have also been dreaming and visualizing this for yourself, but maybe you had to wrap up whatever this was over here first. Okay. Then that's happening for you at this full moon lunar eclipse. So um, I think the surprise factor that could be in play with the Uranus uh, in Taurus is that this vision that you have for yourself could manifest more quickly than maybe you're anticipating. Again, before mid-July, July 16th, I believe, is when the North Node will go into Aries. So allow yourself to be guided by your passion for the new guided by uh, your plans, your mental plans, planning things out with the Queen of Swords, making those inspired decisions, Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords, to, to call this vision into your life. Uh, I think there's gonna be some, also an interesting new group of people that you're going to be associating with, with this new endeavor that you're going to be uh, guided toward. Um, so, but yeah, this is, I think this vision, this thing is manifesting very quickly for you than what you, what you realize. And you may get, because I mean, you're so in tune with the energies, especially at full moons. I think you may get the intuitive downloads, the intuitive hits of how fast this is going to come in for you um, at this lunar eclipse. Because again, lunar eclipse, it is going to shine a light. And, and the universe may bring absolutely a contract your way. Maybe the contract doesn't start for another couple months or a couple weeks with the three of wands. But there could be a contract. There could be an offer for your services. There could be some concrete thing, the Hierophant, uh, that signals this is the commitment from the universe. This is the commitment the universe is asking you to make going forward. It is the one you've been wanting. So get ready. Take it. Do it. Sign up. Here it comes. So thank you so much for joining me for your full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio astrology and tarot reading. Leave me a comment and let me know what's going on for you with these energies. And most of all, please do take care of yourself this week going forward up to the eclipse. And even a few days after eclipses bring out so much intense energy, make sure you stay hydrated, that you get enough sleep and that you just breathe and center yourself and know that you are exactly where you're supposed to be and everything is working out in divine timing and in your favor. All right, love you guys, take care. I'll see you again soon. Stella Wild, signing out.